counterbalance for me and also helps me to get uh, in very good contact with myself so it's it gives me a lot it's the opposite of burnout it lights me up that still doesn't explain the motivation towards wanting to help others well i had my own problems of that age um, uh, late adolescence early adulthood i wanted to work on my own problems i found somebody who could do that uh, i liked the work i got i had a feeling to want to give something back um, yeah, it's difficult to explain because at that, I, I, um, at that stage there was no easy way to train as a therapist, so I had to train in uh, more by the apprenticeship method, uh, learning from uh, my two main therapists who were also talking to me between whilst what is happening and it was a whole education, it wasn't just um, personal therapy. But uh, I, I, I'm not sure what other motives might have been around, but um, maybe this main one was what I've said. Yeah. What do you feel you have still to learn? Well, um, I'm not sure, but one of the things that impresses me is that even with 44 years experience working therapeutically with people um, the main things I have learned have not come from therapy trainings they have come from the clients the, the people I have worked with and in a way I have the feeling that every client uh, I give whatever I can to help a client but every uh, individual hour with somebody uh, has the possibility to give me something new and I hope it does because it will be terribly boring just to do what I know and do the same thing again and again so um, I think one of the qualities I have is curiosity and uh, in that sense hopefully I learn something new in most sessions uh, and then there's the excitement of discovering a new aspect. Um, and even with a little classical example, I mean, in our therapeutic work, uh, we work with a mattress. Uh, this goes right back to Freud, who worked with the couch, Reich, who worked with the couch or the mattress. Most body psychotherapists have a mattress uh, because it's lying down is part of the work and lying down helps you to relax and it gets nearer to the earth and so on. But um, a lot of the work is not done lying down. It's done standing or sitting or in various other positions because we're working with the whole range of body postures. So a mattress is one of the tools in the room. Uh, and what I'm discovering, uh, not at the beginning, what I'm discovering in the last six months or year is the multiple creative uses of a mattress. But it's not me who is teaching the client that. The client is teaching me uh, how creative a mattress can be. So a mattress can be a place to lie down. It can be your mother's bed. It can be a hospital bed. It can be um, um, a, a punch bag. It can be a, a raft in the middle of the ocean. Um, it, it has a hundred uses. And... Um, in the next 10 years of my life, I will discover more. It's just a little example yeah. of the uh, discovery aspect. Um, and it's very interesting, the word discovery, recovery. Recovery means to get something back, like you lose your bag and you recover it. Um, recovery also means healing, getting well. Um, so uncovering behind the problem there are lots of resources so we uncover what is behind the problem and then we discover because we're finding it and we forgot it's there and then we recover it meaning we're bringing it back into use um, but that bringing back what was closed off into use is part of the healing which is called recovery um, that's just one aspect of the play with words. 
and another aspect is the word remembering because classical Freudian work is to do with remembering uh, you go back and you remember childhood and so on and in the early body psychotherapy this was an important path, part but you didn't just remember your childhood you relived aspects of your childhood so it got very emotionally intense uh, but the aim in our work is to move beyond that and to develop um, attributes of ourself that somehow got frozen or stopped at a particular age of childhood. And so it's not just a question of remembering, it's a question of remembering. And member, of course, uh, in French and in um, uh, other languages is the limbs of the body, the parts of the body. So remembering means reconnecting the parts which is part of where we started with integrating, communicating. This woman with the polio is remembering. She's remembering the polio incident, but she's also reconnecting one member to the other. So that's the special meaning of remembering, which is in the present, not the past. If you had to choose one key concept to someone starting out in your profession, what would it be? I, can I take two? Yes. Right. Um, one key concept is the concept of polarity. And the concept of polarity means that uh, there are opposites within us and opposites within people, both of which are valuable. And it means that when I'm working with a particular um, client, a particular problem, I try to get a sense of what that person is needing. And what that person is needing can't be deduced from some theoretical system. Though a theoretical system can help to give you some, some parameters. What that person is needing is uh, developed out of the dialogue within the contact. Uh, and then hopefully we find something that's very helpful to this person at this moment of time. But the thing we find may be very unhelpful to the same person ten hours later. And it may be completely the opposite of what is needed by the next client who comes through the door. Mm. So the concept of polarity is a concept of the uh, variety in people and how whatever methods or techniques or principles we have, um, there is... Uh, another one, which is apparently the opposite, which is equally valuable. So then the skill of therapeutic work is when to choose which, with whom, and uh, when and where and how and with whom. Uh, so that's a very important concept because it saves us from a cookbook approach to therapy and it saves us thinking, uh, doing shallow diagnosis or fitting somebody into a category and making a categorical response. Uh, so we're looking for the subtlety of the differences, not only between one person and the other, but between one person in one condition and the same person in a different condition, maybe half an hour later. Mm. Um, the other concept is a more general concept, and we call it life fields, and it's the understanding of the different dimensions of a person and the connection between these. So we're trying to work in a number of these dimensions at different times according to the, um, what is easy, what is difficult, uh, what is uh, where a client may present their problem. Um, and sometimes we're working physically with movement patterns and muscle tone. Sometimes we're working with breathing rhythms. Um, sometimes we're working with direct emotional expression. Sometimes we're working on the uh, relationship aspects. Um, sometimes we're working with patterns of language. Sometimes we're working with images, uh, dream images or waking images. And sometimes we're working with values, spiritual values and essential qualities. And we're trying to work in each of those levels in a way that has a resonance in other parts of the system. And what we're finding is the more we can make <coughs> a real contact with a person in any of these levels, once we've made this point of contact, it will tend to resonate down and stimulate the other areas. And if it's difficult to get 